All right. So you asked me what the analytical solution was because it was mentioned in PSL one. Um, it's not actually showing up for a few more, like, I think three or four more lessons, but it's not bad to know. So in Dr. Cottom's example, if you recall, the initial condition was P0 equals 100 and um, PN is equal to 0 0.70 PN minus one. Uh, if I look at Dr. Cardell's example, it's the same recursion equation. Instead of 0.75 or 0 0.70, she has 0.85, which she's really proud of getting, which uh, you can understand was a, probably a big deal because many clinical st uh, studies involving teens have don't meet the NIH required 0.7, and she's exceeded it. She's very good at what she does. In the um, model that we had with the disc, the Towers of Hanoi, um, I like DN for discs, but in that case, that number, instead of 0 0.70 or 0.85, it changed to two, and I had this plus one on the end. All of our models are going to look like this. The, these numbers here may change, the 0.07, the 0.85, the two, those numbers may change, but the structure of the model is the same. This is called a linear discrete dynamical system. And in your book, they label the A and the D as what we call parameters, because for different cases, we're going to change the A and the D depending on what we're trying to model. Many things can be modeled by a linear DDS, but not all things. This is not the only way to model something. And so I don't want you to think this is the only thing I can do. Um, this just happens to be really good to talk about things like dropout. So if I model this, we did this in class with disks. Um, so this was your Excel spreadsheet for disks. The persistence rate for just changes for Dr. Cottom's example, I changed the, instead of number disks here, I should have changed the headers, but we can change those later, but uh, here we have the initial condition and the persistence rate A, non-homogeneous term zero, would just change. A and D are what we call parameters. And someone's figured out a formula so that you don't have to put anything into Excel. You can directly punch it in as a solution. So if I have a DDS with A and D, and I, ha I know a and D already, I calculate this thing called P star, which is D divided by one minus A. It'll give you a number. Then I can just plug in, I think someone even asked me this in class, if I know all these numbers, can I just plug something in and find the answer to an arbitrary N? And the answer is yes, that should be N, N not N, N minus one. So this is the formula, as long as, as long as A is not equal to one. And this is in your book. So if you look up analytical solution in the PDF, you'll get to this. So how does it work? Here's your disk problem. I have here A equals 0.7 and D is zero. I just changed them. Oh, this is the Dr. Cottom problem. So it doesn't matter. I didn't change the headers. But in this case, A is 0.7 and D is zero. I plug them into this green formula over here. In this case, P star is zero because D is zero. I plug all those things in and I get for P5, I get exactly 16.807. So, you know, I could ask the question, if Dr. Cardell was uh, at 70%, how many participants would she be able to see at the third visit versus being at 85%? I don't have to like make two Excel spreadsheets. I can just plug them into these solutions and tell you how many more participants she's going to have with the 85% persistence rate, percent per persistence rate versus 70% immediately. So it has an advantage. Although with the Excel spreadsheet, it's not that hard to get it directly with a computer anymore. It used to be maybe 30 years ago, but not anymore. Um, these things have names. We're gonna make a vocab sheet because there's too many names coming up. But if I know P0, like in the case of Dr. Cottom and Dr. Cardell, I can plug that in. And we call that a particular solution because I already know how many initial conditions she has. And if I don't know P0 and I have to leave it blank for someone to plug in P0, we call that a general analytical solution. So verbiage, general analytical solutions when I don't know P0 and I have to leave it there for someone to plug in that value once they know it, 
If I know P0, it's called a particular analytical solution. So it's just a formula and uh, we'll be using it in class. I'll try to use it in tandem so you get used to it because you don't learn math, you just get used to it.